I might uh, entitle this one, uh, Knowing When You're in Trouble, The Sooner the Better, or Never Going to Business Doing Something That Is Your Hobby. Uh, both of those apply, of course. <clears throat> anyway, uh, back in around 1999, I've always been a firearms enthusiast. Um, so I thought, well, I think I'll open a gun store. So I did all the paperwork and everything you got to do to get a federal firearms license, found a spot, and um, rented it and stocked it up the best I could with my limited capital. Um, so I tried to time the open uh, opening to uh, deer season. This is in Georgia. And uh, so my first customer in um, that morning um, wanted uh, ammunition for an SKS rifle. That's a Russian firearm uses eight millimeter uh, rimmed cartridges. Uh, and he's, he's dressed in khakis. And um, so I took a box of shells off, off the shelf and put it on the counter. There was 20 rounds to a box. And he looked at the price, which was about $18 or so. Um, and he says, well, do you sell less than a full box? <clears throat> and uh, I said, well, sure. I'll sell them to you for a uh, dollar a round. And he thinks for a minute and he says, well, I'm going to need um, five rounds. Well, that was a very specific number. <clears throat> so I was curious. I said, you're going to go through hunting season with five rounds? He said, well, I got two deer tags. And I got to sight my scope in with the other two rounds. Or maybe it was three deer tags. Anyway, he had it figured out precisely so that every shot counted. And I thought, well, boy, that's presumptuous to think he's got three deer tags. He's going to actually kill three deers with three shots. Um, but belatedly, I found out uh, I was a member of the gun club up there. And I was uh, I found out too late that all those people who were born up in those mountains for generations, these guys were shooters. <laughs> I mean... In olden days, I mean, they if they didn't uh, uh, make their shot, they didn't eat. So these guys were, I saw some shooting by people up there that were just incredible. Um, I had, um, one of the reasons that the hobby portion of it, I wanted to be able to select the firearms for me. So I get firearm in and I would test fire it. And it performed exceptionally well. I would keep it for myself. And uh, so I had a, a two th 223 bull barrel, bolt action, a loophole scope. So it was a nice, nice gun. Bull barrel means it's very heavy duty, heavy barrel. It doesn't warp or anything. So anyway, I took it down to the range and I was expecting to hit groups at least the size of a nickel. But instead, uh, my groups were, this is at 100 yards, were like the size of a half dollar. So I was mumbling about how bad that was. And the guy next to me um, says, oh, I don't think it's a gun. I think it's the shooter. So I said, well, here, you try. So anyway, um, he wanted two rounds. And I put up fresh, went down in, down to the end of the range and put up a new target. He came back, was looking through my spotter scope. So he fired his first round and he hit dead center. So he fired the second round and 
Lo and behold, there was only one hole in the target. And I laughed. I said, oh, you missed the whole blooming target. <laughs> he says, he said, no way I missed a target like that. Almost like a scene out of the movie Sergeant York. Um, anyway, we walked down to the uh, end of the range to look at the target close up. And sure enough, the hole was elongated, which means uh, the second bullet passed almost dead center through the first one. <laughs> uh, so I knew I was in trouble because I, in the firearm business, you don't make any money on the uh, firearms. You make it on the ammunition. And um, <laughs> when you hit everything you aim at, you don't need as much. <laughs> so anyway, that's... Um, um, when I realized the saying about never get into business uh, because it's your hobby, because it ends up, ends up being a very, very expensive hobby, as that one was. So that was an interesting uh, part of the country. This was up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Appalachian Mountains. And um particular city I was located in up until about 55 or 60, you couldn't even get there from the south. You had to come through um, North Carolina. It wasn't until the late 50s or early 60s that they built a road um, from the south. So these people were pretty well cut off. Um, if, if you've seen the movie uh, Sergeant York, and if you haven't, you need to, uh, and there's a scene in the general store there in the, the town and there's a salesman in there and and um, he was complaining about how hard it was to get into the valley and he says how did how did you, you people get here and he's and one of the guys old men said we we was we was born here <laughs> uh the um but it was a man it was no uh I see. I lived up there until 2003, and um, the only felony in the six years I lived there um, was some idiot tried to rob the only convenience store in town. It was privately owned, and uh, the owner of the store and proprietor grabbed a gun out of the robber's hands and then beat him to a pulp with his own firearm. So when the deputy got there, the guy was laying bleeding on the floor. And the deputy says, um, you know, if I arrest him, the county is going to be on the hook for his medical bills. He said, why don't I just take him to the Union County line and put him in the, out in the ditch there and I'll confiscate his gun and his car. If he wants to come back for those to claim them, I will arrest him then. <laughs> and I thought, how practical that is. I mean, you know, all of his criminal buddies, he's going to say, hey, you don't want to go to Towns County to rob a store because they'll beat you up and dump you in a ditch. <clears throat> Another instance, this was long before I ever moved in there. This would have been in the late 70s, I guess. Uh, the sheriff was killed. He and a deputy pulled over a a car uh, for which a lookout uh, bulletin had been published who was suspected of an armed robbery over in Union County. Anyway, as the sheriff approached the window of the car, the guy shot him, killed him. <clears throat> well, the deputies pinned him down. I mean, they just carried revolvers. They wasn't... Um, but anyway, he radioed the courthouse where the sheriff's station was. And uh, the FBI had given a bunch of um, old Tommy guns to various law enforcement agencies, and Towns County got one. So anyway, the, the other deputy took that Tommy gun. This is one with a 50-round drum. Excuse me. 
up there to where the deputy had the guy pinned down. And then it was like a scene out of Bonnie and Clyde. He emptied that 50 round drum into that uh, car. And, uh, well, that, that, that guy didn't spend a single day in jail. It was interesting. Oh, and there was two brothers up there. <laughs> My wife was a registered nurse, worked in the operating room. Anyway, this guy came in. He'd been attacked by a boar. It had cut his legs up pretty bad. And so they were sewing him up. And um, so she, she was, or somebody asked what had happened. They said, well, they hunt boar with a bowie knife. So it'd be sporting. Now, these are real boars, not just wild pigs. He's up there. They have the Russian black boar. Um, I mean, if they ever get you down, they can kill you. So anyway, what, what way they would do it is one of the brothers would distract the boar. You know, he'd be the bait. And the other brother would come up behind him and grab him by the tusk and slit his throat. Well, on that particular occasion, the, the boar got the best of both of them. <laughs> Just, I mean, who does that? I mean, it's a risky thing to hunt boar even with a, a firearm, much less with a knife. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. Oh, well, this this video will definitely go into the miscellaneous uh, uh, reading list. So, life is interesting. Please subscribe. I, I got a lot of other videos here, so this, this is not your only choice. All right. Thank you.